Hey viewers, welcome back to Petty Chevy. In today's episode, I'm going to focus on working on my front bumper. I think I figured out a plan of how to get my headlights housed in the front bumper and then the front bumper onto the vehicle and figure out all of my turn signal system and hopefully get everything sorted out and squared away. This episode is going to be a little different than past episodes where I went really deep dive into everything. I'm just going to try and do a cursory glance over everything that I've been doing so far in the shop in the off time. So as of right now, let's just go ahead and jump right back into this bumper and I'll show you what I have in my head, hopefully transposed into real life here on the Yankee Auto System. So if you are a returning viewer and you've been watching for a while, back in episode 15 I fabricated the front bumper for the Petty Chevy. What I had in plan was a full size Jeep Wrangler bumper that I have cut out a 10.5 section in the center of it and then welded it back together. That's essentially left me with three to five uh, separate pieces for this bumper. I've got two sides, a rear actual bumper system these are just the fascia covers and then the inner and outer panels separately of their own so while i was here one day i kind of just had a brainstorm of well maybe we'll put the headlights in the bumper as a driving light system like most older cars used to have and then i'll have my auxiliary lights that really affords me the ability to have the lights set up in the fashion that I think would be most appealing and should still be operational and work. So what I came up with is this section of the front bumper or fascia covering I was initially going to use for my turn signals. I had in line a slimline driving light that would switch back to amber for a turn signal and a driving light and then I was just kind of sitting here and looking at the shape of the headlights trying to figure out where it would look best in the fender on top of the fender in front of the fender low on top of the bumper and then I kind of just had a real think and look and this shape here inside of the bumper is a very similar shape to the headlights that I've chosen to use. Now the headlights I've chosen to use are not automotive headlights, they do have LED functionality to them. Uh, they were for a smaller vehicle operation and that's all I'll leave it at. But with about 20-25 minutes of trimming I was able to figure out a way to actually fit the headlight inside of here. Now it still needs some final tuning and final adjustments and the steel bumper is going to need to be trimmed out for the back of the headlight. But this is essentially what I have planned out for my headlights on this vehicle. It does still give me a little bit of room that I could tag a turn signal in there or I can make some kind of bracket that comes across the front to house the turn signals. Still not sure on that part yet, but this was a big leap in my brainstorming of how I was gonna figure this out, how aesthetically I felt like it was gonna work. So that's what I'm working on today is trying to get all the spaces I need to test and adjust this headlight and make it fit, trimming out the bumper, trying to get the bumper support actually made correctly and on the car, and try and make a little bit of headway there. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into all of that, and you guys are going to just be kind of in the background watching me do it.
At this point, I was attempting to use my drop saw to get a square cut on the same material I had used before to make the previous bumper support. I was going to replicate the design but execute much better, or at least that was my intention. I started running into issues with this drop saw where it wanted to walk, and just after even, say, three minutes of holding it in one place waiting for it to cut through, it would just not cut through. So, I was gonna have to have a rethink on it, but I gave it the good old college try, right? Well, I didn't really finish college, I went to trade school, but I mean, that's really beside the point, just, it didn't work, so I had to do something else. Well, let's see my material's too thick for a chop saw. Don't know what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna have to figure that out. Okay, so after three attempts of trying to just get a square cut on my material so I can make some measurements and do some cuts, Come to find out this chop saw is just not set up right for the thickness of this material. It's apparently way too thick. What I started with here, I was just trying to get a good square cut on the edge of it from somewhere I'd already cut, and then it kept walking. Uh, the blade would start walking this way, and the material would walk, even though it's clamped down and supported at the other end. Uh, so that wasn't working, so I tried that twice, and then I just moved the material in and tried to do just a regular cut through, you know, with the chop saw. And even as you can see here, you can see how much deflection is in that cut. That's where it should be cutting, and it's cutting way, way in front of that, because it's just deflecting as I push down. That's probably... I don't know, three minutes of just light pressure in the same area. And this chop saw just is not gonna cut this material. So that means two things. I either need to find new material or I need to do this a different way. I know that with just a regular cutoff wheel and some patience, I can get through it. I've made a su uh, support bracket before for it. It wasn't pretty, it didn't fit the way I wanted to, but I need to have a rethink on this. I'll come back if I figure it out. Okay, here we are. I've had my rethink. It took me probably about 30 minutes to rethink what I was going to do after searching for some materials that I had around the shop. What I found is that I have old seat brackets from an S10 project that I was working on that as I was kind of just glancing over everything seemed like they were going to fit around the frame bucket frame rail and with modification they did what i had to do was cut out essentially this ear off of the back to get rid of these ridges so it would sit flat and then there is a ridge on the inside of the finished one that pretty much butts it up right up against the edge so that i'll when I install everything and have everything finished welded together, it should always go back in to the same place every single time. The modified bracket, what I ended up doing was cutting those ears off, like I said. I cut down this line here, which is this line, and I folded it over so it makes a pocket over the frame rail. Um, I mainly did that all on this side, but it's nice to know that it seems to fit with very little, especially once it's up against the ridge. It fits even on this side very snugly. The other thing I had to do was line up where the hole already was in the frame rail and enlarge the hole on the end so that I can get this bolt that I happen to have uh, fit into the captive nut that I'm making. What I have for that I have my long piece of strap steel. It happened to be the same length, or I'm sorry, it happened to be the same width of the material that I was welding to, so that was good. What I ended up doing was putting that inside the frame rail to where the hole was, put my bolt in, and uh, that was after I got everything welded together. This backside weld isn't the prettiest, but it works. 
and then I made sure to grind down this weld flat so that it'll sit flat up against the frame well. Uh, but this is how everything's going to go together. I'll take my modified bracket, slide it over the frame rail until it hits that ridge to where it stops. And as you can see, that bolt lines up in there as well. Then I'll take my captive nut on the strap steel. I'll line that up with the system. Find the hole, she said. And that fits in there nicely. And I also did have to clear it right here for the captive nut that's already welded onto the other part of the bracket. And once I am ready, I will pull that into the bracket there or fold it into it so that it stays in place and weld that onto this part of the bracket. I'm going to intentionally weld this and cut this on the car um, because that chop saw that I have is not the greatest. It, it keeps leaving heavy burned edges and that might be the blade that I chose. And that's my fault. I just got to work with that. Once I had everything ready, I tacked the strap steel to the bracket that I was making with the captive nut and bolt properly secured. I made sure to also grind down my tack welds because I was trying to get good penetration into this pocket of the system that I was making. Grinding down your welds is not a bad thing. Sometimes it can reveal some errors that you have. Other times it can tell you that you've done an okay, decent job. So there is the strap steel bracket and bolt welded to the rest of the frame rail bracket. Definitely could have been better, however I was trying to stay out of the shot so that you could actually see some kind of welding. But I feel like I got in the pocket well enough in there. It's got enough strength that when I push against it, it's not moving. And realistically, this weld is only here to hold that nut in place. So as long as when it's on the car, the nut and bolt are able to tighten together, then it's it's fine, it's perfectly good. So, so now it's gonna be on to making the other bracket and making it match after I cut off that end of the strap steel and just making them the same. And then I'm gonna come up with, I have some some pipe back there I have to find which which one's going to be the right diameter right thickness I'll make a cross brace across it to try and help strengthen the front end of this too and also help support the weight of where this heavier bumper is going to be lying but I'm going to go ahead and jump into that now
so I've got my second frame rail pocket made. Took a little bit of ingenuity. Unfortunately, the C-clamp has seen better days. It is very bent. Uh, I think it was bent when I got it too. As for now, I'm just gonna kinda throw that to the side and say, well, you know what? I still got the job done. Uh, I was able to use my vice grips with just more tension and get it tighter with a little bit more hammering and such. I've got a little bit more left to do to get this, I think where I would like it, there's a little hump right here, see if I can't fix that, but it fits on the pocket well, it stops right at the ridge, the hole lines up. It's not exactly where it was on the other side. Now, granted, I'm just going by holes that were previously there. I'm just trying to get matched up to those holes and such. Um, so in this situation, what I have is they probably weren't completely even either, which also means this depth is probably not exactly the same either. So when I finally get to the front bumper, I'm gonna have to account for that and get it as close to even as possible because I'm gonna be honest, I'm not gonna get it perfect and I know that. Um, but I'm just gonna get it to where I know that it is as close as I could get it. But I'm gonna keep trudging on. I'm gonna go ahead and make the same strap steel captive nut that I made on the other side out of the extra uh, ear that I cut off that already has the captive nut on it and I know the bolt fits. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into that and hopefully come back when I have at least the bracket portion of it finalized and then am ready to put the cross cross brace pipe on. Once I had the captive nut welded to the strap seal, I made sure to grind the weld down flat with the strap seal. I did this for the very intent to make sure that I would have clearance against the frame rail so that none of this would have to be reworked or have to figure out another way to make clearance by bending the strap seal or anything else. I wanted this to just go inside of the frame rail pocket first time without any issues. Well, well, look at that. Somebody can weld. I mean, they're super high, but as far as my puddle control, it's a lot better. Uh, this was just filling in where I had cut before, just so I could fold the pocket over. But those welds are getting better. You won't really be able to see them, and that's okay. I don't need you to be able to see them. I just need them to work. Okay, so after, I don't know, probably about an hour of extra work, um, I've got those brackets finished, mounted on the car. I think that they're going to work out nicely. There's some other issues I might have to revise once I get to actually hanging the bumper to those brackets. I don't know if I'm going to have this as a bolted unit to those brackets or if I'm going to have it welded to those brackets. Uh, but what I decided to move back onto was making sure that my headlights would fit inside of the steel bumper. Uh, I know that they fit inside of the plastic bumper already because I kind of trimmed that out. That'll need some fine tune adjustment, but it's, it's already fit, mostly. 
So this is what I have as far as the fitment on the right side headlight inside of the steel bumper. There was a section that I had to trim out there so that I could get everything to fit because of the depth of these cooling fins back here, which performance may <laughs> may not be the greatest there. There's still a little bit of uh, clearance, but it, it, it misses. Uh, so that's what it looked like over there. So that's that section that I cut out on the right side. I tried to cut out as little as I possibly could so I could still have something to tie all of this together, but just feasibly I wasn't going to be able to do that without wires getting really close and just constant, constant, you know, adjustment and re refitments. So that's what I've got for the right side. I'm going to go ahead and jump into making the left side do the same thing by cutting that up. I present to you something. <laughs> so this is what I've got with the bumper uh, back together and assembled with both lights in. Obviously, um, there's gonna be a lot of fine tuning adjustment needed to be done. These headlights were obviously not ever, ever intended for this use. So all of this is going to be with a certain amount of not being perfect. But uh, I think that it works out really well as long as I can start to get these pitch and uh, depths correct. What I think I'm going to do for that is try and find some of those spring-loaded screws that can help push the headlight out or, or in. Because realistically what I've got, you might be able to see it better on that side, is droopy headlights. Um, and they are somewhat pitched upwards in the center. There just wasn't really any better way for me to do it by still maintaining this silver surround and not cutting into that and not cutting away more material than realistically absolutely had to. So this is what I have for now. Um, the brackets are installed. The bumper still depth needs to be figured out. This is all the way up against the brackets and it just barely clears that grill. I think I want just a little bit of space to clear the grill just because and that's what I'm going to work on next time but for this episode I think I'm going to call that done skeets. And with that I want to thank you guys for making it this far in the video and tuning in for this petty Chevy build here on the Yankee Auto Systems. I've still got a long way to go. Um, that's to be expected. I'm making custom built stuff. It's not going to be the easiest thing and I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm happy with the progress that I'm making with the front bumper and everything else. So if you guys could remember to like and subscribe to the Yankee Auto Systems and make sure that you follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash new Yankee Auto. That's where I'm going to keep all of my live updates in between all of these episodes. I'm going to still shoot for having one a week, but that might be a little difficult in the coming future. So I appreciate you guys tuning in and watching, and hopefully we'll see more likes and subscriptions to be able to keep going. Otherwise, thanks for watching. <laughs>